Welcome to today's demonstration. Today I will demonstrate the fairly new product, Oracle Spatial Studio, which was released this summer. It's an extension of our spatial and graph option in our database, and it enables visualization, spatial operations, and spatial analysis in a no-code environment. In this demo, I will also show you how you can use it in conjunction with Oracle Analytics Cloud to enable visualizations, but also to enrich your analytics work. A little bit about myself. My name is Jasmus Edvac. I'm a solution engineer, and I'm based out of the SC Hub Malaga. And I work within pre-sales, uh, specifically around autonomous databases. But I also have a background in GIS, so in geographical information systems. Big news, the spatial and graph license is now included in all Oracle databases which have an active release. This is for both Standard Edition 2 and Enterprise Edition. So this means if you have uh, an Oracle database with an active release, you can go ahead and download the Oracle Spatial Studio and start using it for free. So we are now in Oracle Analytics Cloud. And in this case, we're representing an electrical company. And we are overseeing a number of power lines, in this case in Sweden. We also have customers getting distributed by these power lines. And we also integrated some weather data. And in this case, there is a storm uh, rolling in over Sweden tomorrow. As you can see, the wind speeds are picking up uh, in the evening towards eight or nine and reaching gusts of 33 meter per second. So that's considered storm. Everything above 25 meter per second is considered storm. And we want to identify what or which power lines are in danger of getting torn down by these strong winds. And also see how many of our customers are at risk of then receiving outages of these power lines going down. So for that, we need to identify which power lines uh, that are in danger of these strong winds. And for that, we will go over to Oracle Spatial Studio. So this is the Oracle Spatial Studio. We have a Home tab. We have a Data tab. We also have a uh, tab for our active projects. So I will go ahead and import uh, some data sets. In this case, we allow uploads of files uh, in spreadsheets shape files or GeoJSON. But I have connected my Oracle database, in this case, my autonomous database. So I will go ahead and import my data. First of all, the weather data. So this is the data set that I have uh, integrated in with weather data. But as you can see, we have a yellow sign here and it's a table. So this means that we, in this case, need to geocode it and create longitude and latitude indexes. So we have a function for that in Oracle Spatial Studio, and we will now assign for the system that this is a uh, geometry. And it's done, and we get the pin here. I will also go ahead and import the power lines that we could see in Oracle Analytics Cloud. And I will go ahead and do that as well. As you can see, we also have a yellow sign here, but we have a pin. So in this case, we need to assign a key. And we have a studio ID here, so I'll go and activate that. There will be a message popping up saying we need unique values, which we have. I go and I go ahead and validate my key. It's valid. And click apply. And we're now ready to visualize our data set. So we'll go ahead and create a project. And you simply just drag and drop our data set. 
This is a fairly huge data set, as you can see here, and it's represented by many points. And each of these points represent wind speeds. So in this case, I will also go ahead and import the power line. And we can also drag them onto our project. So in Oracle Spatial Studio, we have a number of settings that you can apply on your database or data set. We have legend, so you can activate or deactivate your data set to the legend. You have uh, interaction uh, settings if you want to ha interact with your data set. We have a filter where you can filter uh, based on your columns. And we also have a style tab. So for example, I can base uh, the color on the data. So in this case, I will choose the gust with a strong wind speed. And we now get a better representation of where these high wind speeds are located. So we can see along the Norwegian border as well out in the Baltic Sea. However, there is a lot of data that's not really close to our network, which is uh, located in Sweden. So we want to segregate data that is, that is inside of the Swedish borders. So for that, I will go back to the data tab and I will upload a data set. And in this case, shape, a shapefile. So I have shapefiles of uh, the Swedish borders in this case. So I will go ahead and call it Sweden. I will enter in the SRID, which is 3006 for the Swedish coordinate system, and I will click Submit. What is, and we get a notification that it will notify us when it's done, and it's done. And what's good is that we now also have it saved as a geometry in our database automatically. So I will go back to my project, and I will import this data set and drag it into our project so we can visualize and we can see it's the Swedish borders. So I will go ahead and I will do a spatial analysis on our weather data. And here we are faced with a lot of spatial analysis options that you can apply. So we have filters. As you can see, a lot of filters. So you can filter geometries based on other geometries. You can also combine geometries. So combine two different geometries to a new geometry. And you can also transform geometries. And finally, you can also measure your geometries. So these are some really neat features. I will go ahead and go back to filter. And I will use the feature return shapes that are inside another. I will go ahead and call these uh, points Sweden. And we want to filter our weather data. And we want to filter that with the Swedish borders. And I will go ahead and click run. And hopefully we will end up with a data set with only points within Sweden. I will uh, hide these layers. And I will drag my new analyzed layer. And indeed, we have the points in Sweden. However, we are only interested in the really high wind speeds, which could cause damage to our network. So in this case, I will go ahead and do another spatial analysis. And in this case, I will use the return element filtered by non-spatial rules. And I will call this data set extreme winds. I will go ahead and filter the value gusts. And I'm interested in greater than, say, 23 meters per second. So this could be winds that could cause damage to our network of power line. I go ahead and I will import that. And as you can see, 
we have now filtered out uh, the high wind speeds which are within the Swedish borders. So if we turn on our network, we can kind of see which networks will be in danger, but we want to separate those uh, parts of the network. So I will go ahead and do this, my final spatial analysis. And in this case, I will use return shapes within a specified distance of another. So we will call this uh, power lines at risk. We want to filter our power lines and we're going to use the extreme winds as the filter. We're going to choose a distance, so 10 kilometers, for example. So this is the distance where if our power lines are within 10 kilometers of these uh, measured hard winds or predicted hard winds, they will be uh, filtered. We will see so everything looks good. And yes, we have now separated the power lines that are at risk. However, we wanted to see uh, how many of our customers are at risk. So for that, we need to go back to Oracle Analytics Cloud. So we need to export our data set and Oracle Spatial Studio has a export feature. So I will go ahead and I will export the data set. You can either export it as CSV or GeoJSON. In this case, I will choose CSV and I will only export the Studio ID since we already have the network in Oracle Analytics Cloud. I will go ahead and save the file downloads, for example, and I will extract it. And then I will switch over to uh, Oracle Analytics Cloud, and I will go ahead and add the data set. So create new data set and simply drag and drop the CSV file. We will go ahead and look so everything looks fine. We have the studio ID. I'll go ahead and add that. But what we will do in this case is to create another column. This column will be named status and it will just contain a string uh, saying under risk. So we can identify th that these segments are under risk. And I will apply the change and then switch over to visualize. And what we can see now is our new data set. And we can also see that it has been matched with our existing uh, power, power line. So that's kind of neat. Uh, however, we want to visualize these power lines. So go ahead and create another layer and simply uh, drop the status as the color and the studio ID as the category that we want to visualize. And hopefully we will end up see our power lines that are under risk. Uh, yes, however, they are green not the most suitable color for alerting risk. So I will change to something more suitable, for example, red, and hopefully it changed to red, which is more suitable in this case. So we'll go ahead and wait and see, and yes, they are now red. However, we wanted to see how many of our customer would be at risk. So for that, I will simply drag and drop the ID of the power lines at risk as a filter. I will go ahead and select all. And there we go. 12,800 customers would be at risk 
uh, of outages. So that's, that's how you can use Oracle Spatial Studio to first of all visualize inside of Oracle Analytics Cloud, but also to enrich and enable more complex analytic work and predictive analytic work in this case. Thanks for listening.